morning here in Porto. So what is today? It's nine years today since we first met. Exactly nine years since we first met. And who thought that nine years later here we'd be sat in Porto on our boat, having sailed here. And uh, yeah, so what are we going to do today? So we're going to start exploring Porto. There's so many places that I want to go and see. So we're going to go out, see where the day takes us. Yeah. Maybe stay out late, maybe come back early. Yeah, see how we feel. Yeah, so let's go and explore Porto. This is Intrepid Bear, a 40 foot sailboat off to explore the world with her crew Ian and Kate. Come aboard and let's see what's out there. Leaving the marina to walk the three miles into the city, our first experience was the traditional fishing village of Afurada, with its tiled buildings, backstreet fish restaurants and the public laundry room. Well, there's not so many here today, but this is like a... I'm not quite sure if it's a, a um, laundry that people pay for or just people come to do their laundry here. Uh, that building behind me is like a... I guess it's a public laundry room where you can scrub all your laundry on the sloping sides. And then they're all hung out here on all these rustic poles uh, to dry. And then onwards along the banks of the mighty Douro River, past some ruins evocative of bygone splendours. Come on. Fishing seems to be a right thing here, and they've even got rod holders. Rod holders built into the walkway, and so fishing rods all the way along the front. It looks like an old traditional type of boatyard, uh, where some of these traditional boats have been going up and down the river and being built here or refurbished. I think they were used for carrying ports up and down the river. I hope you will find out more to do a port tasting tour. I think they were used for transporting ports from the vineyards to the port houses and then perhaps overseas. I reckon you're right. That was indeed the case. These distinctive craft known as Rebellos transported port wine down the river from the vineyards and were instrumental in Porto becoming the city that it is, built largely on wealth generated by the port wine trade. This is where we felt the city really started. This young brother and sister violin duo set the tone and have become the soundtrack for memories of our time in Porto. Porto is sometimes known as the City of Bridges as there are six of them within the city. But by far the most famous is the iconic Dom Luis Bridge built between 1881 and 1886. It is a double decker iron bridge with both decks originally intended for roads. But nowadays the upper deck carries the Porto Metro. So we're on top of that big iron bridge now. And uh, there's like train tracks here. This is a tramway and we've seen several train slash trams going across but there's all these people just wandering about in the tracks but I guess the trains don't run that fast and they've got horns etc <laughs> saying about Porto and not thinking about going there or you wouldn't yeah. have thought about it. 
hadn't thought about going to Porto before because didn't really know much about it. It wasn't a city that's been on my radar, but I've seen a lot of people come here on YouTube sailing channels. And um, yeah, it's awesome. It'd be a brilliant place for weekend break, three or four days here. Mm. It's a stunning city. Definitely worth a visit. Amazing buildings. Busy, busy, busy. And across the bridge into the bustling heart of the city, the architecture was absolutely stunning on every corner. I don't think I've ever seen a city where everything is so ornate. The tiling, it's just, oh, wow. This grand building, this is just the railway station. There was one building that Kate had particularly wanted to see. What's this place? This is Liveria Lello, which is a library. Um, <laughs> What's special about it? Well, it's especially very beautiful, and I think. Um, we have it that it was inspiration for one of the libraries in Harry Potter, that's probably why it's so popular. Yeah. This is the queue for the library. Who would have thought it? Even the back street areas of the city had their own charm. So, I've got garlic steak, which is fairly simple, and you've got... Um, Trasman. Tenderloin Trasman. <laughs> Hang on, I've got this bit here. Whatever that is. <laughs> so, there's the streets back to there, you can see streets. Oh, uh, yeah. See yeah. Back streets there, and then there's all these... You don't realise, look at the building yeah. that we were actually in. Look. Yeah quite spectacular in itself isn't it? Yeah. I just think it's a restaurant but... Yeah. Yeah. These buildings that line the waterfront are the port houses. More about them later. Where are we? We are in... Churchill's Port House, Churchill's Lodge, which is a port house, and they're going to show us around hopefully. And then they've just given us some white wine to make us forget what's going on. What did she say the wine was for? For company? Yes. Yeah. Like, each other is not enough. We have wine for company. <laughs> we're waiting for another couple before we start the tour. So she's bought us a glass of white wine to keep us company while we wait. So this is white port, isn't it? Mm. Mm. It's that colour because of the barrels apparently, but it's like a white wine. White port. about the difference between port and wine, but I couldn't tell you so we learned that the multiple port houses on the waterside, many with household names, were at the end of the port production process. And Churchill's also explained to us where it all starts, way up in the Douro Valley. 
We didn't have time whilst in Porto on the Bear to explore the Douro Valley, but as we spent our winter in Portugal, we took the opportunity for a winter road trip to see this beautiful region. It's rather lovely, isn't it? Yes, pin, pin how to... Yeah, well, neither of us would be able to pronounce it properly, but pin how, pin how, pin... But look at the place. So you can see up here, I'm sure we'll see more of it, but this is terracing where they grow the vines for the port wines. Um, all the like big farms of vines they call quintas. Um, so the quintas is where they have a, I suppose it is like a big farm really, but it's not called a farm, it's called a quinta. A vineyard. A vineyard, that's the word. A vineyard. A vineyard, yes. yes. And unfortunately we're out of season at the moment in terms of, oh, there's no grapes uh, or leaves on the vines it's obviously not it's january so the best time of year to come up here is sort of i think august then it's be very hot and busy so yeah. yeah well it's nice to be up here now and it's because it's no not too many people around but yes vineyards is the word i was looking for as we progress up the valley it became clear just how much of the steep sides have been terraced to grow the vines the terracing and quintas of well-known brands could be seen on every hillside. So yeah, down here, these are rows and rows of vines, and this is just a small one. They're all over the hills. So if you look up into the hills, they're all around. And these are all the grape vines, and rows and rows. I'll just pop over the road here because there's some by the side of the road, just to show you them. A little bit closer up. Obviously, we're out of season, so they're not in bloom at all. But um, yeah, there's some over here. Look, best not get run over in the process. But yeah, up here, there's some of the grape vines a bit close, a bit closer up. So uh, that's what they look like. At this time of year when they've got no grapes on them it's warmed up a little bit now it's 11 or 12 degrees and it's not very windy so it's really quite nice and uh, we really are enjoying the benefit of being here out of season kind of you know it'd be, it'd be nice to see the uh, vines in season when they're all blooming and there's uh, foliage on them and everything but the trade-off of there would be lots of other people here Come away from the Douro River. That river down there is the Tua, and that's the Tua Lake. And we're heading down towards the Tua Dam, and this is a national park, and it's stunning. So down here is the real Tua Dam. Is it called? The Check that out. This is the Foz Tua hydroelectric dam. Construction was announced in 2006. But the project has been controversial as it forced the closure of 16 kilometres of the Tour Railway, cutting its connection with the, the main rail network. There's a, a railway over there. You can see in the distance there's a bridge, and then a tunnel there, and a track along. And it stops at the dam. 
So once upon a time, I think the railway probably went all the way along this valley, but then they built the dam and it's just had to stop and it's now disused. The Douro Valley and surrounding area is incredibly stunning and I would highly recommend a visit to anyone. Before ending our trip up to the Douro region, there was one other site that we wanted to see. It was quite breathtaking, but there were a few nerves on the way there. We are at a place called Ponta 516, which is Bridge 516. And uh, it's a suspension bridge that we're gonna go and, I think you're right, I think it might be down there, is it? So there's a suspension bridge. We think it's like a grated, Floor, so you'll be like suspended in midair. Possibly the longest pedestrian suspension bridge yet. So let's go find this bridge. How are you feeling about it? Because we've been stressed getting here and being late, so I get really stressed by being late. Um, I haven't had a chance to stress about the bridge, but having watched the teasers on YouTube, I'm quite scared. <laughs> what were you saying earlier about being stressed about getting to a place that's going to stress you? Yeah, so I'm stressed about being late and that we've got the wrong side of the bridge and various other things. But the ridiculous thing is I'm stressed about getting something that I'm stressed about going on anyway. So stressed about the idea of being late for something that's going to cause me stress. But you do want to do it, don't you? Or you want to see it? Yes, I want to do it. It's going to be a challenge for A me. challenge, yeah. Not that I'm afraid of heights. Pont 516 Aruka is the longest pedestrian suspension bridge in the world. It is 516 metres long, suspended 175 metres above the Paver River. I'm reassured it can't be that bad because watching the group that go and cross, there's nobody lying on the floor, snivelling and crying and clinging on and having to get an evac team in to get them out or something. So it can't be that bad, can it? Kate's made me swear on absolute pain of death that I won't wo rock the bridge because sometimes if we're on a suspension bridge, a little one, I might just wobble it a bit. But uh, don't tell her that this one's wobbling anyway. But I won't rock it because I'll probably be in a lot of trouble. I could die if I rock the bridge. And down to the river, way down there. And the bridge. Yes, that's right. There's a fall down that side. I'm all right. I'm holding on though. Yeah, it's, it's a bit bouncy, isn't it? <laughs> Probably can't see it on camera, but it is wobbly. <laughs> it's the see-through floor that does it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if you stand and look down for too long, that's when you start, if you're going to get first go, you look to your feet. Like. Mm, yes. Hovering. Just hovering in the air. And then having walked 516 metres across the bridge, you have to walk 516 metres back again. So I'm almost disappointed in myself for not being freaked out. <coughs> I thought, genuinely thought I would be, you know, gripping on and close to tears. So, um, and you're fine. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Yeah, stomping along. No hands. No hands. So yeah, Kate thought she would be really nervous about it, but she's got no hands or nothing now, and then feels quite happy. Hang on, sorry. Oh, you seemed all right with that. Yeah, I enjoyed it actually. 
I think the anticipation, as usual, is far worse than the reality. Seeing the bridge and seeing people walking across it is quite scary, but when you do it, So, this episode has been a little short on sea time, so let's get back to the summer, check out the weather at the beach and move the boat out to the anchorage ready to sail on. Anchored in the river we witnessed a phenomenon we hadn't seen before. So there's this line coming down the river, over here. It's hit the other boat over there, and that has swung. So I reckon that's almost like the tide coming down the river, so the tide has stopped coming in. This is almost the river flow pushing back, I think, I don't know for sure. But uh, we'll see when it gets to us, because I say this other boat over here is completely swung around. Never seen anything like it. Literally, the flow of the river has now overpowered the tide and we are about to swing. And that basically is the tide going out. Did you ever see anything like it? And there ended an amazing few days in Porto. Join us next time for a bumpy departure, a 36 hour passage, and find out what's making Kate emotional. And that's why we want emotional now, just a sense of relief, but.